Yeah, I, I'd say yes, but I'd even generalize it way beyond that. I, I think there's a disconnect between science and engineering and the general public. Okay. And, uh, you know, you might even uh, go wider than that. You know, the other sciences, the biological sciences and medical science and such. Um, how so? How do, how do you explain having a well, disconnect between the sciences and... Because... The it comes back to the way that uh, scientists communicate. You know, they they communicate with each other in a lot of jargonized language. I mean, I struggle to get through some papers, and I've spent my whole life, you know, uh, my whole life, a large part of my career, uh, you know, working in geology and geophysics, and then I'll pick up a paper, and I, I struggle to get through it. And then I realized that this was really something simple. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult at all, but it's just written in this jargonized language. Uh, there's an attempt to be completely detached and it makes for complicated sentences. So there's this culture uh, that you know we, we're, we need to talk to each other and we need to sound like we know what we're talking about. We need to sound sophisticated. We need to sound scholarly. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that gets in the way of communicating effectively to the public. Now, fortunately, you have things like the Discovery Channel and uh, National Geographic Channel and things that are doing documentaries and they're putting on lots of s science on there. But even those shows, they, they'll only take it so far and they don't really breach the gap in my view, mm -hmm. uh, that really communicates really what's going on. You know, they'll th throw out some something like, um, "Well, we think there are ten dimensions," and then just leave that hanging there and go on, as if suddenly everyone should just accept that that there are ten spatial dimensions or nine spatial dimensions, whatever the case might be, and. You know all these fantastical terms, and they all sound oh wow, that sounds so exciting. Now, well, what does it really mean? Mm -hmm. And why do you think that? And how can that be? Um, I, I see these things all the time, and uh, there's no attempt to really, to really breach it, make it, make it mean something to someone who's never heard something like that before. Uh, they have people have a certain knowledge in their brains that that they gather from walking around and uh, experiencing their lives that has no connection to that whatsoever, and so it ends up just becoming a mantra or or some kind of statement that you're, you're supposed to accept because somebody said so. I think it all has to be rooted, connected together. At least I, I know that you know there's there's this mathematical gap in between, but I believe that we need to put a lot more emphasis on the conceptual side of things and connecting the concepts to why we would think that something like that might be true.